You're listening to Carrie Lutz's Financial Survival Network, where you get valuable information you just can't find anywhere else. To thrive in today's trying times, you need the Financial Survival Network, now more than ever. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and get your free newsletter and gift. Financial Survival Network, now more than ever. Welcome. You are listening to and watching the Financial Survival Network. I'm Carrie Lutz. Well, uh, let's take a look at housing. And well, basically, the market looks like it's heading down. Mortgage rates are uh, kind of lower as well. So will lower rates really improve housing? We've got housing starts down, home sales down, and we've got uh, applications for new mortgages down as well. So let's talk with our mortgage expert, Debbie Bloyd. Debbie, welcome back. So what is going on with the housing market here? It's like somebody's letting the wind out of the sails. Well, I think it just depends on where you're at in the process. A lot of people have gotten pretty um, disenchanted with the whole bidding system and they just don't like it. Um, but it's it's the way it's going to be. I don't see in that changing any. So I think we have to reset people's expectations of how it's going to be now. Um, now there's always a short supply because rates are so low. Everybody wants to jump in. You know, Carrie, rates are going to be higher next year. So if you're going to buy, you should buy now. Uh, rates could go up a half a point to a point next year. So you'll be able to buy more house now for the money. You just may have to compete more for it. All right. So what's the uh, Case Shiller report looking like? What's it telling us now? It's telling us that the numbers are up uh, in the top 20 cities across the United States, but anywhere from five to 20%. So depending on what city you're in, you may be paying 12% more than you did last year at this time, but most of appreciation is gonna be on this hype. Now, will that appreciation stay five years from now? Not sure, but right now it just shows that more people are buying at an increased rate because people are going over asking price in a lot of these cities. You know, Seattle is very busy. Texas is very busy. Uh, everyone's leaving California and going other places. And so their money is going further. So they're buying no matter what. So that's part of what's fueling this is real money overpaying to get into a house so they can own and not rent. Right, so I know things are still busy in Florida, but one phenomenon I've seen uh, recently is price reductions. People are actually reducing prices on the homes again. And that was a bit of a, well, I shouldn't say a shocker, but it tells you something about the market. Well, I think people get greedy. You know, they get greedy really fast, Carrie. And so when they hear that things are up 20%, instead of listing their house at 400 where it should be, they started at 450. They just want more. They think, you know, I deserve more. I need more. The market's willing to pay more. And then a lot of these houses, Carrie, are not up to snuff. You know, if you have an older home and you haven't continued to upgrade it and put all the latest like, amendments, uh, amenities in it, you're not going to get top dollar. So it's what you're comparing it to. Now, if you have a five-year-old house and you haven't done anything with it, and there are people buying new houses, you think your house is pretty spiffy until those people don't like it because it's been five years and there's new toys in the house. So I think it's relative. Everyone thinks their baby's cute, but when you line up all the babies, there's always definitely a beautiful one and then some not so pretty ones. And those parents love them just as much. I think we're doing that with our houses as well. Yeah, well, all my kids were always the best looking kids. In of the course. No <laughs> debate about that. Well, I bought a house, it was the fourth house I bought that was actually built in 1990, the year 1990. Wow. I built, house, I built a house in 1990 and I bought three other houses. For some reason, that vintage just seems to work for me. But what I notice is uh, they didn't have the closet fetish. I think women probably had about 10% the amount of shoes that they had. Uh, sure. Things days. have changed. Yeah. 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 So if I've got people that have got their houses up for sale now and they have done a price reduction because, again, they've lived in it 10 or 12 years and it just hasn't kept up with the style. It may be the wrong color paint. It may be whatever. And some people want um, when they compare that to a brand new house, it's moving ready. I think when you moved, you were moving ready. 
So you were happy about that. Most people don't want to move in and then rip up floors or repaint. So that's where the disconnect comes. If you've got a new house, you're waiting in line at the home builder to get that finished. If you're buying a lived in house, you know, you're going to have to bring it up to speed depending on what your speed is. And that's why I think we see the price reductions. Exactly the point, uh, you know, upgrading the windows to hurricane windows here, putting in a generator, putting in the uh, barbecue right. island, all that good stuff. Right, right. And it's easier to justify it now because, hey, I'm going to get my money back for it, you hope. But, right. you know, what happened here in Florida in like four months, prices went up by 25 percent and new home prices went up even higher. But you it just, did. it's unsustainable. It can't continue on that way. Well, I think it will level out when um, people quit moving around, but we're going to be moving around the next few years. A lot of people are trying to take new jobs. They don't want to go back to the office. They're rethinking their lives. You know, there's a lot of people going through divorce now. A lot of people have had kids since COVID because of COVID. (laughs) They were stuck together for a while. So we have a lot of families changing. And when those families change, that means housing changes because of all of the parts of a house, the windows are more two befores or in short supply, and they're doubled in price, even though two by eights haven't, uh, two befores have. And most contract home builders for big production builders use two befores. So um, a lot of those production builders are having to expand their prices. Now, they may come down in a couple years, but once they get that threshold moved up to here, it's only going to go up higher. They're never going to go back down. Why would you ever go back down and ask less? Yeah, right. This inflation, too, that's taking place, uh, like you mentioned, uh, the components of building a home and uh, a lot of stuff is in short supply. Windows. windows these windows, yeah. it's like four months before I get them installed. The sure. generators, they seem to have. Uh, I was blessed with uh, needing a new hot water heater that I managed to get in an hour. But uh, but all these systems and everything. So but housing affordability has been taking a big hit. It's going down. So that's got to have something to do with it. Just like cars. I mean, I rented a car from, uh, I took my car into the dealer and they had a uh, enterprise rent a car right there where they give you a car. And they told me they're not buying new cars because they're too expensive. The car I had on it was in good shape, but it was 40 something thousand miles. You used to get in a new car and you'd be the first one to drive it. You know, it had like six miles on it, but not the case anymore. Don't just survive, thrive. The Financial Survival Network. Arcana Corporation is on the verge of bringing the world's highest grade silver mine into production. The Revenue Virginius Mine in Colorado has proven improbable silver reserves grading nearly 37 ounces per ton silver with an all-in sustaining production cost of only US $8 per ounce of silver. The mine is fully permitted with infrastructure already in place and the company has announced they plan to commence production in 2020. Achieving successful production usually results in a significant upward share price re-rating on the Lasan curve. Arcana trades under the ticker AUN in Toronto and AUNFF in New York. To learn more, go to arcana.com. That's A U R C A N A.com. This is the Financial Survival Network, the information you need to thrive now more than ever. You know, Carrie, everything is getting more expensive. Your food's going to be more expensive, you know, and we're checking ourselves out. I mean, I went to CVS this morning and I checked myself out. You couldn't find a worker in sight. You order at the fast food restaurants, you order from a little digital menu. Um, People, people, workers are going away in that in that skill set level. So I think we're going to see a lot of changes in in how we do our business. And I think this is going to be the new normal. Um, Not, you know, a house is not a right. A house is not part of the constitution. It's a privilege. And if you have bad credit or you don't make enough money, you don't get a house. This is not a country where everybody gets a house. You can get housing, but you don't get a house. So I think people's expectations are kind of out of whack with their income. I've got several clients in the $200,000 range and they're not happy with the choices that they have. And they come to me as a financial person and I do their mortgages or I help them find the homes. And they're like, well, these just aren't good enough. What is your suggestion? And I'm like, make more, <laughs> retool yourself. You know, you have to make more. If you only are a minimum wage earner, you're not going to afford a $500,000 house. You need to be better or settle. 
you know, and I think people don't want to hear that. We're, we're, we've raised enough generations now where everybody gets a trophy. So everybody wants a half million dollar house. Everybody wants a new Jaguar or Lexus and that's supposed to be okay. And that's not really how it works. So you have to make yourself better. And I, and I think that is one of the takeaways. If you can't afford a $500,000 house, then you're going to have to move to where the houses are. You can afford. That means you're going to have to drive longer. You're going to have to go to different schools. Um, I always say money doesn't buy you happiness, but it buys you options. And so, um, I think some people just need to retool the way they live. And that's not a popular opinion. For sure. I always say uh, money can't buy you happiness, but it'll do till the real thing comes along. There you go. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So I think if you want to get in the housing market, Carrie, you need to get in now, better now than later. Um, you know, I do have programs as a lender at 100% financing. So USDA is 100%, FHA. I work with a big lender that does the 90 6.5%, which is the FHA loan. And they also give you the three and a half percent loan. Now that interest rate is not going to be as low. If you don't put your own three and a half percent down, it's more about 4% um, interest rate rather than a, a maybe a 3% interest rate, but they're loaning you hundred percent of the loans. So there are loans coming back on the market like pre 2008 to help people to get into homes. But again, the people that don't have any money to put down, they also probably don't have good credit. And they probably also don't have good job history. So even though I say those loans are available, not everybody can, uh, can, can fit into that box because if they were better candidates for a home, they would have some money saved in a better job history. Yeah. Well, one thing I noticed uh, for self-employed people, uh, getting a mortgage myself and a number of other people I talked to has become uh, worse than going to the dentist <laughs> to get a root canal. Then you are not using a broker, Carrie, you're not using a broker. So there is something called bank statement loans. Have you ever heard of those? Yeah. Then they want more money for the higher. <laughs> yeah, they, <laughs> yeah. I know about that. If I, you yeah. give me less documentation, I have to charge you more interest. But for my people that write everything off their, their bank statements and are self-employed and run a company, um, we take the last 12 or 24 months of bank statements. And of course you're paying 5% for that, but we're not using your tax returns where you write everything off. There's actually an investor loan now where we don't use any tax returns. And the whole reason that you get the loan and the whole premise for the loan is that you get it off the rent of the property that you're buying. So you get it off the rent rolls and it's called a noni. It's a non-owner occupied, no income loan. So some of my investors are going that way because they just can't make the numbers work any other way. Yeah, well, I had 800 credit score plus. And this is how they reward me for it. <laughs> that credit score just gets you a good rate. We still have to have all the documentation. It's like uh, taking blood. I know. Yeah, it was more though. They, they went overboard, but I understand <laughs> they have investors. And, and then I get the notice in the mail. Of course, I knew this was going to happen, that my loan's been sold. And who was it sold to? Uh, JP Morgan Chase. You know, the people that wouldn't do the loan in the first place. Yeah. yeah. I, I didn't even bother going to like, uh, you know, too big to fail national bank for it because yeah. I know they'll just put me through the ringer. And well, if you, know. if you, we go off adjusted gross income on those bank statements. So if you make 500,000 and you write everything off and your adjusted gross income is 40,000, then that's what we're giving you the loan based on, not the 500 earned. So if you write everything off, you've just lost all your buying power. That's why those bank statement loans are handy. Yeah, I got it. I got it. Hey, on the, on the hundred percent loans, you're also allowed to have the uh, seller play, pay the closing costs as well, right? You can, and you can also get a gift for your closing costs. So mom and dad, so I have a lot of young couples doing that. Mom and dad um, pay the closing costs for you. Um, you, you put the earnest money down and sometimes you can even get the earnest money as a gift. But again, those people have to have job histories and um, a little bit of money in the bank of their own, but they can get a gift from mom and dad. So they're basically getting everything for free. And again, not everybody can qualify for those. So it's not like we have hundreds of thousands of people applying for those because most can't get in that loan. 
Yeah. All right. Well, that is interesting. Well, uh, Debbie, people want to find out more about you and uh, what you're doing. Connect with you on the web. How do you do it? I've got a lot of places. They can find me on Facebook or Instagram at DLB Mortgage Services. I'm actually on TikTok. Are you on TikTok yet? Oh, if you're on it, I got to be on it too. You got to be on it. You got to be on it. The kids are all on it, but I just talk. I don't dance. Um, So on TikTok, I'm on Dollar Diva Debbie. And and then they can call me anytime. My number is 979-220-3018. All right. Cool. Well, Debbie, as always, we appreciate you coming on, giving us the latest, uh, latest inside uh, talk on housing and mortgages. And uh, I guess it comes down to their lowering standards, but the big banks seem to be uh, cutting this business down. Uh, they don't. They are. They're lending less and us brokers are, are lending more. So, you know, the banks are all going to change over the next five years. So I think more of us brokers will get more of the business as people understand we have different options. All right. Hey, appreciate it. Got a question for Debbie? Just shoot me an email if you got a question for Debbie, KL at KerryLutz.com. Make sure you go to the site, Financial Survival Network work.com sign up for our free newsletter debbie always a pleasure and we will talk to you again real soon thank you thanks for listening to carrie lutz's financial survival network your solution to today's trying times for the latest go to financial survival network.com financial survival network now more than ever